This sin will stop you from getting to heaven, self-righteousness. Our God is a God who accepts people and rejects people, and this is a common theme in the Bible. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like to hear this about God. They want a God that condones their lifestyle, a God that allows them to live like Satan himself and still go to heaven, a God that does not require anything from them. However, this is not the God of this Bible. The God of this Bible doesn't condone every lifestyle. The God of this Bible is a God that gets up close and personal about the way you live your life. The God of this Bible accepts and he indeed rejects people. There is a new religion, the religion of the Pharisee, and God will reject those who are Pharisees. The religion of the Pharisee is a religion of self-righteousness. The religion of the Pharisee is a religion of human endeavor. The religion of the Pharisee is a religion of human achievement. The religion of the Pharisee is a religion of human adoration. The religion of the Pharisee is a religion of human self-achievement. The religion of the Pharisee is a man-centered religion. The religion of the Pharisee is a religion of self-righteousness. And this is something God will not accept. God will not accept self-righteousness. God's standards are too high for me. God demands us to be perfect. I cannot meet God's standards. I know me. I know I am not perfect, but yet God requires perfection. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. The Pharisees thought that by keeping the law, they could meet God's standard of perfection. And in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus reveals what God's standard of perfection is and what a person would have to do to always meet the same standard every day of their lives. They would never hate, slander, or speak evil of another person. They would never lust in their heart or mind and not covet anything. They would never make a false oath and always be completely truthful. They would let God defend their personal rights and not take it upon themselves to defend those rights. They would always love their neighbors and even their enemies. Tell me one person on this earth that is perfect. Have you ever come across anyone that is perfect? I know I haven't. God's standards are too high to meet. And those who are modern day Pharisees will be rejected by God because they don't meet the standard of perfection God requires. The Apostle Paul and Matthew and the rest of the New Testament writers make it all clear that perfect righteousness, as Jesus has described it in Matthew chapter 5, can only be received as a gift from God through faith in Jesus. Romans chapter 3 verses 23 through 25, For all have sinned and fall short in the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. The only people God accepts are those that acknowledge their need for Jesus Christ. The only people that will enter heaven are people who cry out to God and say, Lord, I know you are righteous. I know you demand perfection, but I can't reach that standard of perfection, Lord. My little list of do's and don'ts is not good enough to meet your standard. And that is when God gives you the gift of salvation. God will reject the self-righteous. He will, yes, he will, because self-righteousness attempts to remove Jesus as being the door to the Father. Self-righteousness makes individuals their own savior. Jesus told a parable about self-righteousness and its consequences. The parable goes as following, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, 
or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The Pharisee began to tell God about the things he does not do and how good he is. I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers. He came with the spirit of pride and self-righteousness. The tax collector, on the other hand, was justified because he didn't make any excuses. He humbly approached the throne of God and prayed for mercy, and mercy in the sense of atoning sacrifice. He didn't say, God, be merciful to me, I am not a Pharisee. He didn't say, God, be merciful to me, a holy man. He didn't say, God, be merciful to me, I'm only human. He didn't say, God, be merciful to me, I'll try to do better. He simply prayed, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's all. Humility will take you a long way with God. The Pharisee portrayed his pride before God because of his self-righteousness, and God resisted him, but gave grace to the publican who humbled himself. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Self-righteousness is one of the evilest things that one can allow in his or her life. Like the Pharisees, it makes you paint yourself as white before God. That is evil. That is evil. Just think about it. The audacity to go to a holy God and tell a holy God how holy you are whilst highlighting other people's sins. That is so evil. God, I go to church every Sunday and I am better than Rebecca because Rebecca had a child out of marriage. God, I am so good. I am not like these other men that commit adultery. God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers. It makes you begin to tell God the things you do not practice. It makes you to say you're good while you try to hide your evil. Meanwhile, God sees your heart. He knows what you do and the motive behind all your words and actions. And one thing that I have seen in my years of experience is that self-righteous people tend to live moral right lives in that they, one, don't have sex outside of marriage. Two, they don't watch porn. Three, they don't steal from others. But what they do struggle with is sins of the spirit, like pride, envy, and self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is so dangerous because it is a sin someone can have and not even have the slightest idea that they have it. It's not a thief. A thief knows they are a thief. An adulterer knows they are an adulterer. If self-righteousness would take anyone to heaven, a lot of moralists who do not believe in Jesus would get there before several Christians. There are people who follow other religions and, by and large, live great moral lives, wonderful lives, good, wonderful people. Salvation is not because you are a good person. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The reason Jesus said this is because the righteousness of the Pharisees is self-righteousness, the one they sought through their own strength. In fact, self-righteousness births hypocrisy, as we observe in the lives of several Pharisees. There is no righteousness that can take us to heaven other than which Christ imputed on us. You can only enter heaven by putting on the righteousness of Christ. Self-righteousness will send you to hell. Moreover, why should we seek self-righteousness when Christ has made provisions for us through his precious blood? The balance of this message is that we are saved by grace through faith in the finished works of Christ. Therefore, we receive the righteousness of God by believing in Christ. Our faith should come before our works. We are saved by faith, not by works. We are saved by faith to do good works. Therefore, our good works should complement the righteousness of faith, which we received in Christ. James chapter 2, verses 18 and 26. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast failed, and I have works. Shew me my faith without thy works, 
and I will shew thee my faith by my works. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without work is dead also. The righteousness of Christ that is imputed on us is to be complemented by our good works. Our good works is not what saved us. Rather, it is to complement our faith. Our righteousness is of Christ.